Well, hello everyone and thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Leadership for the Now, or actually it's Leading on Mondays. And my name is Florian Longo and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And as usual, I'm joined by my teaching partner, Madalina Ginescu. Well, welcome, Madalina. Hey, Florian. I, actually, I'm so happy that you said that because now I realize that we are so passionate about what we do that we we also like to discuss with you and to have important topics on monday we also have some other topics during the week we also have some videos uh, with interviews related to leadership so everything is around leadership Absolutely. and i'm so happy that we are i'm here with you today florin again to discuss on our last episode on uh, self-leadership one-on-one series and today we are going to talk about influence as the only measure for leadership. And we are going to discuss why is influence so important to any leader and what is the only measure for, for leadership. And we are going to, to answer to some, priv- to some questions, important questions that usually people ask when we think about leadership, when we talk about leadership. And those questions would be related for anybody who is as aspiring leader or anybody who is in a leadership position also. And we are going to share some tips and tricks, how to do, what to do to increase your influence and some personal questions, uh, some personal stories, sorry for that. Some personal stories we have that helped us to see the importance of influence. So Florin, from your point of view, I will ask you, I will start with the question, why do you say that leadership is important, that influence is important in leadership? If we think about what leadership is, you know, there is a lot of myths out there about what leadership is. And if you now Google leadership and you're probably going to find, you know, 768 million, you know, answers in 0.4 seconds or whatever, something like that. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and although we have all of those definitions about leadership now at the end of the day is how much we can influence someone to either make a decision that we know is going to help them or to follow us on a journey. If we are a company leader and we have a vision for the company, if we don't have influence with people, people will not going to follow us. So the reason why this distills down to to influence is because if you are a, a parent and we just become parents, right? So so for now, our baby boy, Adam, is, is, is too young to actually kind of, you know, care about how much influence I have with them, with, with him. But, you know, it will be a time when as a parent, uh, the only influence I might have with them is that I'm their parent and they cannot kick me out of the house and, and they kind of <laughs> depend on me, right? And I don't want to be in that position. So many people, they have this positional leadership and they say, well, because I'm the boss, right? Or because I'm in charge, right? Or because I pay you, right? And because I hire you. And all of those becauses, you know, fade out in, in, in the face of, influence because that's not influence that's influence until someone will find another job somewhere else right so what i'm saying is that even as parents even as spouses even as friends we have influence with people in our lives in other words you know as a parent you know i influence my child to make some choices that i know are good for him right as a spouse i influence my wife and many times this influence comes through the power of example, right? Yes. Even though I could say that this is important, if I don't do it myself, then of course the message that will be sent out is that is not that important, right? So in any of these situations, we might not see this as being leadership, but it's actually leadership. And, and what this distills down to is having influence with other people, being able to influence other people. When someone mm-hmm, is an mm-hmm. influencer, right? And, and, and now that's a job, right? Uh, when someone is an influencer, they have influence on people and, and they could influence those people's decisions, right? So, mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. the influence someone to follow. When they say I have X number of followers, right? They have people that follow someone influence. Those people have no position, 
have no title, they're not the CEO of any, you know, they're just someone that has maybe some results, that have done some things that we have talked about, right? They have uh, the right attitude, they have the right character, they have, you know, their self-discipline, right? All the things that we talk about right now has positioned them to have influence with, with those people. So that's why I believe leadership, if, if we look at the essence of leadership, and, and this is, you know, it's not only me saying that, is distilled down to, to influence. So, 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 so important for anybody listening what Florina just said about the influence. And I'm pretty sure that all of us, many of us actually have a great, great definition, a very clear definition of what is influence. So whenever you inspire somebody by your example or by empowering, empowering other people to do more, to become more and to dream more, and to become a better person, actually, that means that in that context, you are a leader. So that's why influence is so important. And influence is actually the measure of leadership. The way you influence or the level that you influence other people, it means that you are at that specific level of leadership. And it's um, so important for an aspiring leader, if they are not yet in a leadership position, uh, to think about influence from the first day, from the first uh, step that they do outside of their comfort zone, outside of their own homes. So whenever you step aside, uh, you step outside of your comfort zone, you are surrounded by other people. The way you talk to the uh, lady at the grocery store, the way you talk to the to the cleaning uh, officers or men on the street, whenever you talk to uh, somebody on the street, w w the way you do these small things to other people is actually how you influence them. The way you are in traffic, the way you are in the subway, the way you are with your with your you, with your loved ones, with your friends. So you you don't know exactly at that specific moment how you influence other people, but what you can do at least is to try to be. A better influence as 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 a better influence as you can because uh you can smile to somebody and uh, then you make uh, that person a better day or you can be grumpy and grunchy and you don't like this and you don't like that and guess what because of this attitude you might uh influence other people to have a bad day because they saw you and you just ruined your your ring their day because of this so it's very very important to first of all identify that you are influencing other people every single step of the day even if you like it or not and you never know how impact one action that you did can have upon other people absolutely so what do you think about that Florian? Uh, it's, it's absolutely spot on. It's absolutely spot on. And, and uh, you know, as a, well, as, as a leader, if, if you think about that, uh, you know, John Maxwell shares in one of his books five levels of leadership, right? And, and, you know, we could say that those are five levels of influence. So depending on how much influence you have with someone, uh, you might be with them at a different level. And and I think the first one is position, and, and position means like you know I'm I'm the manager or the leader because someone appointed me, and and if if I'm new to the team and I just become the leader of the team, then okay because I'm the leader, people will 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 follow me, will give me a little bit of credit because you know okay so if someone appointed him or her, okay, then it might be something about them, right? Okay, so let's just give them that credit, right? So they follow mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you're the, the appointed leader. But what happens with that is that it, it doesn't take too long for you to either show that you are someone that it's worth following, like you are good at the things that we share, like have the right attitude, the character, self-discipline, and you're good at priorities, you solve problems for the team, right? And you have a vision for the team. Uh, or what happens is that that time that you bought in the beginning with the title actually is just for the team to realize oh you're not that good no you don't really know these things <laughs> oh okay so so i'm not gonna even follow you anymore you you might be the you might be the boss but but you're not my leader right 
Yeah. And here is an important point, point where informal leaders actually raise this to the to the situation. Those people that you said are aspiring leaders, they don't have yet the position, but they are an influence in the team, right? Yes. And, and that way you see that actually the team does what someone on the team actually suggests, not what the leader suggests. So that's kind of the position level. And then, you know, you go up on that kind of pyramid or that kind of scale and you, and you go to permission where people have seen, okay, so so Florine or Madalina, well, they seem to kind of have something. There is something about them, like the way they, they behave, the way they, they talk to the cleaning lady, the way they, you know, they talk to us, there's, there's something about them. So, so okay, let's give, the, then they give you permission to lead them. And yeah. then you start with production when you start bringing results for your team and then the team follows you for the results and then you start developing people and then you reach that level where people follow you because of who you are. Mm -hmm. But we could mm -hmm. be with different different people at different levels, right? You could, if you have 10 people on your team, you could be with, with, with 10 of the, the 10 of them at completely different levels on, on that, that scale. But for me and, and for leaders, I think it's very important for us to understand, you know, what kind of influence do we have with people and where are we with them? And, and this is going back to knowing actually what people value. If someone just joined the team because they need a salary right now, they need an income, then you know that if there is not something more important than that to make them kind of follow you and the team, then when they get a better salary somewhere else, they'll go, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so yes, yes. that's why at the end of the day, you know, it, it boils down to how much influence we have with them. And this is also the reason why when a leader leaves a company, people follow the leader, not the company, right? Mm. So, so that's yes. because that person have, has influence with people and doesn't matter, you know, the company they represent. So that's, that's you know, when I speak, with leaders about influence and you know becoming more influential with their with their team inevitably we have to go back to all the previous eight nine episodes we've done right because all yes. that all those pieces lead to us having more influence with our with our team yes it's important important words uh, that you said Florine because what we do what we did in the previous episodes are the puzzle pieces of the puzzle that you can put in front of you and at the end of the day you get the image of influence is the way uh, applying what we discussed in the previous episodes is actually how you gain influence and how you can identify if you have influence upon other people or not um, you can check with three simple questions if uh, the person in front of you that you want to check if you influence or not do they, uh, um, uh, do they think of you that you can help them? Mm. Can you? Can they trust you? And you can help me out with the third question. What do you think is the third question? Do Do, do you care about me? Do you care about me? Yeah, that's the third question. Is is these three simple questions. So whenever you uh, have the answer yes to these three questions, then you are in a level of influencing the other people, the other person in front of you. So definitely we, with the loved ones, we can say yes with these three questions. We can have the answer yes to these three questions because we really care about other uh, our loved ones. We really want to help them and they can trust us with everything that they have and everything that they do. So expand this notion to 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 your work, to your people. Um, if you are if you are an aspiring leader, find out intentionally during a day, during a week of work, how can you do to increase your influence with these these three these simple questions? Make people and be the kind of person that people can trust. People can uh, can come up with uh, when they need can come to when they need help. So it's very very important for you to do this intentionally. And for the and for the the people who are already in a leadership position, 
of course you need to to pay attention to what florin said with the levels of influence levels of leadership but also remember every single step that it's all about people mm. it's all about people and regardless of where you are in a position of leadership and what is your level of influence with other people you need to pay attention to this uh to to this uh way of being i think we can say this is a way of being to intentionally try to be a better person and to help me people as much as you can Absolutely. how can we as people how can we as leaders uh become even better at influencing people what do you think is there any other tip and trick that yeah you can... i think actually it's, it's about caring for people and about Very people, like being, being being interested in, in, in them as individuals. Like if you think about what we discuss when we discuss about engaging employees, when we discuss about motivating employees, uh, all of those things require a lot of intentionality, as you mentioned, and a lot of resources from the leader to really spend intentional time with people. And, and how do you share, how do you show that you care? Well, for example, if someone has a life event, right? They maybe have something in the family. Maybe they have something, you know, um, a celebration. It could be a, a positive mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a, a, a something to celebrate. It might be a challenge that they have in their lives. Like if you as a leader, you're generally interested and you generally actually take into account, okay, so if you think about, okay, so if Madalena goes through this right now, like, you know, how do I make sure that, you know, I show her that actually I care and I understand her situation right now. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. How can I, how can I make sure I I show to her I'm interested. I show to her I care. I really want to know how she feels, but also to see, you know, is it appropriate for me to ask for those results right now? Like if mm -hmm. I would be in her shoes, and if I would be going through that, mm -hmm. like if she's homesick with COVID, right? What what does she expect from me, right? Mm -hmm, and, and, and so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that way, as leaders, we really are able to create that kind of environment. You, you just mentioned, and you, 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 you made a really, really good um, analogy. You said, with our loved ones, we can answer those questions positively, right? You know, I, I, uh, I care about you, I trust you, right? And I want to help you. Now, yeah. when we talk about building culture at work, we're talking about, well, we, we, you know, we feel like a family, right? Oh, okay. So if I ask your people, if I interview them, right, would they say about you that you care about them, that they can trust you and you can want to help them, right? This is the test of leadership, the test of influence. I think those three questions are really, really good. And as leaders, we probably have to take a pen and paper and maybe put the list our people and then answer these questions. What do we believe mm. they would say if, if someone else will, will, will ask them or maybe if, if their best friends would ask them? Because maybe if I come in as a consultant, they will not be open to me. But if their best <laughs> friends, right? What do they say when they go home with, with their spouses or with their, with their friends, right? What do they say about mm -hmm, me? Mm -hmm, do they think mm -hmm. that I'm that kind of person or not, right? So, so I think... You know, on top of what we just share, all of those kind of leadership skills and, and self-leadership skills for us to become better as leaders, then if you add care, you know, on top of that, that will be, for me, the perfect combination for us to, to build influence with, with people. Thank, thank you for that. I just want to add one more thing. When you don't know exactly because because it's difficult to go ahead to go around and ask people, do you trust me <laughs> as a leader? So if you don't know the answer, because most of the time you don't know the answer, pay attention to those activities that need that kind of mind, mindset uh, that you need to have to make sure that you increase your influence upon other people and the people that you influence they know that you care for them they know that they can come to you to to ask for some help so they can know they can trust you and things like that so when you don't know just put your mindset uh in that kind of uh, uh, in that kind of setting and then you will definitely gain more influence 
I have one little story that helped me to gain influence, and I was actually thinking about that uh, when I was a uh, few few years ago at the beginning in my company, my my current company. I I'm very passionate about coaching, and I'm very passionate about training, and I wanted to deliver the skills and the the things that I have uh, from Maxwell Academy to my colleagues, to my managers. And when I got to the company after a few months, because nobody well, the people that had the position and the authority to uh, to deliver and to to decide what kind of trainings will be in the company, I I was going to them and I said, okay, look, I have this leadership game. This is a powerful tool that, uh, that for us, for anybody, or any kind of team to uh, collaborate better and to be more efficient. How about to how about you can uh, and I can set some some time to have some discussion with the managers it was just a discussion and say yeah 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 this is an interesting idea and guess what nothing happened <laughs> because it, you really need to have an introspection after this kind of things so what happened from my point of view my point of view was that i didn't have enough influence people didn't see me as a trainer didn't see me as a coach they just saw me as a, somebody who was uh, new to the team and they saw me as my current position as a developer and it wasn't the influence there so what i made it very clear to my mind i set my my mind to create and to increase my influence upon other colleagues and I created and I was I was paying attention to all the opportunities that I had around me that I can prove my skills as a trainer and my skills as a coach with other people and after four years and a half now more than four years and a half I did a leadership uh, leadership game with um, many people in my team also managers in their teams uh, I did some trainings with them I did some technical trainings but I took it every little thing step by step until I'm here today to uh, uh, to uh, to to have people know me as a trainer and a coach and what I do as a developer. And I had the surprise uh, two days ago, another colleague just called me. I said, look, I know what you do. <laughs> Can you help me with this thing? <laughs> and I was, that was my proof that I have influence on people with what I want to do. Absolutely. So good I hope this, this story inspires you to influence other people and to uh, to uh, make yourself to be even more aware of all the opportunities you have around you. That's such a good story. And, and you know, the point there that I got from what, what you just shared is that you actually took on every single opportunity you got to yeah. do what you want to do, right? So, so this is so important. People don't miss this, right? So for someone which is an aspiring leader, you want to increase your influence, now, there will be opportunities when there will be challenges, there will be things that will be needed, and someone, and they will, maybe the manager or the leader will ask for a volunteer, or maybe they will not yeah. even ask for a volunteur. but you could be the one and say, pick me, pick me, I'll, I'll, I'll take yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, taking yeah. those challenges, taking those things that are not your job, right, are not, might, might be part of your job, or, or might not be part of your job. You're taking those opportunities, you're taking those challenges, what will happen is that it will build that kind of influence with your team because you're going to prove that you could solve problems for them or you could bring value to them. So, so bring that's value. so that, bring value. Very good point. <laughs> that's so important. And, and and you know on on the same kind of the, the kind of the last thing I want to share is is a, is a story uh, of me working with a team and and we were we were actually trying to solve a problem. And there was, uh, you know, of course, the, the manager of the team, the appointed leader, and there were, you know, the team members. And we were, we were brainstorming and we were looking at other situations. I was helping them, you know, go through that situation. And I noticed that during that day, what happens is that many times when there was a question that I, would, I was I would asking, well, many people will turn towards a person. And that was not the leader. Right? That was not the appointed leader. <laughs> so, so... Uh, so here is here is the, the the leader, and then you know the team, and then one of the most experienced uh, people on the team. It turned out that he was the informal leader, so he didn't have the title, he was not the manager, 
but he has the most influence with the team because whenever was a, a, a important decision to be made, everyone looked at him and then they positioned themselves based on what he said, right? They didn't look at the leader. So that yeah, yeah, yeah. was a really big lesson on how influence works, right? So here he was, the person with the title with no influence and the person without the title with the biggest influence. And then guess what? People will go at a coffee machine and talk to the informal leader. They will not go and ask the leader. They will not go ask, you know, what do you think about this? No, they will go and chat at a coffee machine or water cooler yeah. with the informal leader. And so for me, that was a really good lesson. And I realized, oh, okay, now I can see who's the leader in this team, right? And of course, you know, it will not. It was not an easy task to actually, uh, you know, talk to the actual leader about him not being the leader, but uh, it, it was how influence works. This is how influence works. So that's why um, I think it's the the only measure of leadership, and and I truly believe that. Wow, such great story. I I, I rem it reminded me of the same situation when I'm looking for the leader, the informal leader around me, just to make sure who has the most impact to the group of people. Great, great lessons today, Florin, and great story and good points, <laughs> uh, you and me. And I hope that anybody who's listening to us now uh, will take note on this and put it into practice because we are talking about leadership we are talking about ways to do but when you are on the field in the court then you will realize okay i need to practice more this i need to do this more i need to be make sure of this i need to pay attention of that one so take everything that you learned from us uh, into practice and see what happens because in the practice you will notice that it's it's not enough to have the, the idea of it but you also need to put it into practice and see what happens and then you should adapt and trust us the more you do that the better you become a leader absolutely and this well, actually the, concludes... the, the, the more you become a better leader sorry yeah, the more the, you become the... a better leader yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. The more you practice, the, the better you become. Yeah, so, yes, so that, exactly. that's true for everything. So yeah, I, we hope you got some good ideas that you could actually implement in, in your in your leadership practice. And this actually concludes our series on, on self-leadership, right? And over the next episode, it's probably going to be 10 or 11 episodes, we're going to talk about some mindset shifts, right? Some leadership mindset shifts that we need to make as leaders to adapt into today's situation. So, so this is... Uh, things that we see companies do, shifts that we see other leaders do. And, and, and this is more about the mindset of the leader and how do we need to think. So we're not going to disclose more than that, but we look forward to see you next Monday on, on talking about the mindset shifts that we need to make as leaders to adapt to the current situation and, and, and the, global, uh, the global context. And I cannot wait to, to share those. Looking forward for our next meeting. Take care, Absolutely. everybody. All right. Take care. Speak soon. Bye-bye.